horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. of unrest that followed the Civil War, a powerful secret organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up in the western United States. Its members were to be found everywhere, defying the law or using the law for their own purposes, working toward the ultimate goal of revolt and the foundation of a despotic empire. It was the masked rider of the plains who led the fight against this band of outlaws and traitors, and for once his great strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness were taxed to the utmost in the cause of democracy. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, from the trail of Black Arrow. Hail, Silver, away! It was midnight when the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the banks of the Missouri and turned toward the north. Suddenly, a red glare leaped to the sky ahead of them, and as they rounded a bend, they could see a cabin in flames. From inside the cabin, a man's voice called out for help. help! The masked man and the Indian urged Silver and Scout to greater speed. Faster, Silver, faster. Get him up, Scout! Help! Only one side of the cabin is burning, Tonto. That man can't be cut off. Maybe him hurt. There's a lot of wood piled up along the bank. Ah! This landing, my boat stop. If the fire gets that far, we won't be able to save it. Hold steady, Silver, steady. Hold. steady. Hold. There he is. There's the man. Climbing out of the window on this side. Uh, him not see us. Steamboat heading in for the landing, Kimosabe. Uh. Help! He's trying to get their attention. Hello there. It's all right. We're friends. The masked man and an engine. Who are you? There's no time to answer questions. If you want to save that cordwood on the far side of the cabin, we'll have to start moving it. Move it? Don't you want to save it? Sure. I, I just didn't think. I was trying to put out the fire. Well, the cabin's done for. Come on. Three men attacked the wood pile, and before long, the gap between the cabin was so wide that it was safe from the flying sparks. The steamboat had made a wide circle out in the river and was edging into the bank, its nose upstream. Thanks a lot, masked man. I lost my head, I guess. If it hadn't been for you, all my winter's work would have gone up in smoke. Well, that's all right. But how did the fire... Well, it don't make any difference to me if you're an outlaw or not. You hightail it out of here, and I won't say a word to the captain. Now, before I go, I'd like to know how the fire started. Well, I don't know. Might have been Indians. Indians? Or an outlaw gang. But I know you didn't have any part in it. Well, what happened? I heard a bunch of horses stop outside and they went for the door. I didn't get that far. They started throwing torches through the window. And from then on, I was stamping out the fire until it got too much for me. Then you climbed out of the window on the other side of the cabin. That's right. Do you have any idea who those men could have been? Nope. The Indians are outlaws. I don't know. Why should they want to set fire to your cabin? Search me. Now you called for help. 
Who did you expect to answer you? I heard the steamboat whistle from around the bend. Kimotabi. I'm tying up to shore. Yes, Silver. Yes, Count. Yeah, I'd advise you to beat it pronto. That's the Betty W., Captain Weston. He's an old fire eater. And if he finds you here, he won't listen to anything I have to say. Well, which way did the men go? Huh? The men who set fire to your cabin. I didn't pay any attention. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. We'll find their trail and follow it. Come on, Silver. Come on, Count. Silver. He called his horse Silver. That was the Lone Ranger. What's going on here? It's all over now, Captain. Somebody set fire to my cabin. They did a good job of it. Are you hurt? Nope. Thought not. I told you there was no reason for us to stop, Mr. Knight. I heard a call for help, sir. That was me. I knew you were close, and I figured if we could get here in time, you might help me save the place. It's too late for that now. Mr. Knight, tell the men to cast off. Captain Weston, now that we have stopped, can't we stay here for the rest of the night and refuel? We'll make better time in daylight. The channel's treacherous. No, we'll take on more fuel in the air. We'll reach there in the morning, and we'll lay over for a day. We wouldn't have to lay over at all if we... You know my orders. There'll be no stops on this run except at the forts. Aye, aye, sir. I got to get some new supplies to rebuild my cabin. Can I ride down to Pierre with you? Did you pay your fare? Sure thing. Then why not? Mr. Knight? Aye, aye, sir. Back to the boat, men. Stand by to cast off. Come on, step by me there. As the steamboat got underway once more, the captain went to his cabin. High above the noise and gaiety of the lower decks, young Jerry Knight stood his watch beside the helmsman. Betty Weston, the captain's daughter, climbed the bridge and stopped for a moment with her hand on the railway, watching his face and tent on the river ahead. Then she walked toward him. Jerry? What is it? You and Paul have had another fight, haven't you? Not exactly. What's the matter between you two? You used to be the best friends in the world, and now you... Please tell me. Betty, I I don't know myself. I admire your father. I respect him. He taught me all I know about navigating this river, and I'm grateful. Somehow, sometimes people change. You're right. He has. Maybe I shouldn't say this to you, but last winter in Fort Benton... That's when it started. He got mixed up with some mighty shady characters. I never could figure out what it was all about, and I tried to warn him. It didn't do any good. I don't have to tell you what he's like when somebody tries to give him advice. Oh, well, he just won't listen. Then spring came along and we started getting the boat ready for the first run. Captain seemed to be his old self again. Yes, I noticed it myself. When we left Fort Benton a week ago, something happened before we sailed. Just the night before. What? Oh, I wish I knew. I, I thought he was sick when he came up on board. I remember that night. Ever since then, it... Oh, it's got me stumped, Betty. I don't understand him. I don't understand his orders. He used to say the Missouri had a hundred tricks in the daytime and a thousand at night. He always used to tie up when it got dark. Except for tonight, we've only made two stops since Benton. Fort Berthold and Fort Abraham Lincoln. No stops except where there's a fort. Now, what's the sense of it? It may sound foolish, but... But what? He... He acts as if he were afraid. I wouldn't have said it myself, but it's true. Afraid of what, though? I don't know. He's been afraid ever since that night at Benton. Oh, Jerry, I... Never mind, kid. We'll see him through no matter what it is. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been scouting the forest around the landing. At last, the keen eyes of the Indian found the track of a single horse, and then... Only one, Kimasabi. That fellow say gang right up to cabin. He may have been mistaken. We'll follow the trail. Uh-huh. Get him up, scout. Come on, Silver. How fresh is it, Tonto? Uh, him ride this way not long ago. Maybe two, three hour. That's too long for the man who set fire to the cabin. Uh, two or three hour. How to tell by hoof print. And their broken branch, how to tell by leaf. Something strange about this. Perhaps he didn't tell us the truth about the fire. You look. They're leaned to up ahead. A horse standing beside it. Ah. He's tied. Tied to that tree. What you think about lean to, huh? That man at the landing may have used it as a shelter when he was cutting wood out here during the winter. Maybe so. Maybe there's somebody inside now. Come on, Silver. You be careful. Keep gun ready. Oh, oh. steady, Silver. <laughs> their footprint. Man go in, carry something. 
Him come out, not carry it. Follow me. Kimasabi. On ground. Yes, it's a man. He's unconscious. Maybe dead. No, Toto. He's been wounded, but I think we can save him. There's some kind of mystery about that fire. This may be the only man who can solve it for us. Thanks. That food was good. Now that you've finished eating, we'd like you to answer a few questions. Sure. I guess you two saved my life. Well, what's your name and where do you come from? My name is Harry Lindgren. My cabin's just a little way from here on the river. Your cabin? I see. Go on. I make my living cutting wood for the steamboats. What happened last night, Harry? There isn't much to tell. About ten o'clock, a fellow rode up. He called, he called himself Kurt Banner. I was fixing a little grub for him when all of a sudden something hit me. That's all I can remember until I woke up out here and saw you two. Kurt Banner. Do you know him? We met him. The cabin was on fire, and we helped him move your cordwood out of danger. He said that outlaws had started the fire, and we tried to find their trail. He's a crook himself. Well, that's certain now. But there was no way we could know at the time. I've heard about all the work you've done cleaning up the West, Mask Man. Aren't you going to take him prisoner and turn him over to the law? Him not at Landon now. You see, Tonner rode back there while you were still unconscious. Aren't you going after him? We're beginning to think he set the cabin on fire himself. It looks like it to me. But why did he do a thing like that? Well, it was a sure way to bring the Betty W. into the landing. He may have wanted to get on board. Why? That's what we've got to find out. We're going after him all right, Harry, but not until you're strong enough to ride yourself. Oh, I'm strong enough now if it isn't too far. The nearest spot where you can find shelter... Now, where's that? A trading post about two miles down the river. Good. We'll leave you there. Then Tonto and I are riding after the steamboat. Steamboat? Kirk Banner must have left on it. We'll try to catch him at Fort Pierre. After the woodsman had been left at the trading post, the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced on through the forest toward Fort Pierre. It was an hour before sunset when they reined up in the woods near the town. They could see the steamboat and the river in the distance. Eddie Silver. We can't ride into town wearing a mask, Kimosabe. No, that'd be plenty bad. But we can't wait until dark. It looks as if the Betty W. is about ready to leave. Isn't that right? It's up to you, Tonto. Uh, what you want me to do? Find out where Kurt Banner is. If he's still on board the boat, or if he's in town, or if he's left. Uh. If you find him, go to the sheriff, the colonel, or the captain of the boat. Either one of the three. Bring him out here. I want to talk with someone in authority, Kimosabe. You want Tonto tell sheriff this Kurt fella crook? I'd rather do it myself. You see, there may be more to this than attempted murder. Maybe him, Black Arrow. It's possible. If he wears a tattoo mark of the Black Arrow, he may have Confederates around. Uh, maybe Torlock. If you see him, we won't wait for the law. Uh, time to go. Now go on foot. You better leave Scout here. Uh, that's right. And hurry, Kimosabe. There isn't much time. Aye. Aye, Kimosabe. Who's this with you? It's mate from boat. Where's Kurt? Him in Cape near River. And you're the mate of the Betty W? Yeah, but I'm still wondering if the engine told me the truth about you. Uh, you look at horse. Oh, gosh, she's a beauty. Mm, maybe mask friend break gun, show your bullet. I'll be glad to. Silver. Well, I guess you are the Lone Ranger, all right. I'd sure like to help you, but I can't stay here long, mask man. We're going on just as soon as the last of the wood's on board. I'll come straight to the point. That man you picked up at the landing is a crook. He tried to murder the real owner of the cabin. What's that? He may be even worse than a killer. There can't be anything worse than a killer. He may be a traitor. You mean... You mean a traitor to the United States? Yes. But gosh, what makes you think that? You got any proof? The proof is simple. Look for a tattoo mark on his left wrist. The mark of a black arrow. That's all the proof we'll need. Oh, it, it can't be. It's impossible for me to explain. You'll have to take my word for it. But, mass man... What's the matter? But you must be wrong. Captain Weston. What about Captain Weston? He couldn't be a traitor. I know him too well. It can't be. Are you trying to tell me the captain I've has a... I've seen it. Captain Weston's got the mark of the black air himself. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger was talking with a mate in the woods near town, Kurt Banner strolled from the cafe to the landing and watched the stevedores as they finished loading the Betty W. Someone touched him on the arm. A tall man dressed in a frock coat and a flowered waistcoat. A soft hat was pulled low on his forehead. But Kurt could see his eyes black and piercing. Have a match? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here you are. Would you like a cigar? No, thanks. Isn't that the captain on the bridge? That's him, all right. Well? Who are you? I'd rather talk about you. There's a landing about 20 miles up the river. Cabin burned down there last night. When the Betty W. put in the lender hand, you got on board. Had to get some supplies to build a new cabin. Yeah. Captain seems to be in pretty fair health. I didn't have a chance. Too bad. Honest, I followed orders just like they were given to me, but there wasn't any chance. You're lucky. What's that? Your orders were to do the job between the landing and Fort Pierre. I know. We were afraid that the captain might get in touch with the colonel of the fort here. I don't think he has. I know he hasn't. That's why you're lucky. Looks now as if he intends to take the boat all the way to St. Joe. You'll travel with him. Oh, do you think that's funny? I said it was coming here for supplies. I don't have to go any farther to get them. Don't you want a chance to redeem yourself? Sure. Only it's going to look funny. Don't be so self-conscious. There are over 200 passengers on the boat. They won't pay any attention to you till afterwards. What about afterwards? That's up to you. Have they finished loading? Yeah. Mr. Knight, down there! No, sir. You said a little while ago, sir. Where is he now? We don't know, sir. He ain't here. I gave you my orders. We won't wait for him. Get on board, Kurt. Let's hope you don't fail this time. I won't. You know what will happen if you do. You can depend on me. I'll get the job done tonight. You understand why I'm telling you this, masked man? I can't believe the captain's guilty. But I know he's in some kind of trouble, and I know you'll help him if you can. If he isn't guilty. I'm sure of that. It all happened last winter in Fort Benton? Yeah, it couldn't have started before then. If only we'd spent the winter at St. Joe like we usually do. But the ice started forming early. Listen. Is that a warning signal? They're leaving. They're, they're leaving me behind. That's right. Can't to see boats swing out into the river. Well, he must have known I wasn't on board. Of course, his orders were that we sailed as soon as we were loaded, but just the same. Don't you worry think. about it. Now get back into town. Have the sheriff arrest Kirk Banner and then get a horse. A good one. We'll wait here for you. And then what? You want to catch the boat, don't you? Well, yeah. So do I. The river winds a lot. Hano can lead us through the forest and we'll reach the next landing ahead of it. But the captain won't stop at the next landing. We'll find some way to get on board. Now hurry. Kino. Paul. What is it, buddy? Why did you do it? Do what? Leave Jerry behind. Now, he knew my orders. Oh. oh, what's the matter with you anyway? <laughs> Don't cry. I, I'm your daughter, aren't I? And Jerry's your best friend. Why do you treat us like a couple of strangers? Like enemies, almost. Don't, Betty. Jerry will find some way to catch up with us. Oh, it isn't that so much. It's you. There's something I've been wanting to tell you for a long time. When we get to St. Joe, I hope that you and Jerry will get married. When you do, I'm going to put the Betty W. in your name. Oh, no, Pa. This boat means too much to you. We couldn't I won't have any use for it anymore. I'm going away. You go... Where? I'm going, that's all. But you'll have a good husband and a fine boat. What reason could you have for leaving us? You've got to tell me why. Never. If I could be sure you'd never find out, I'd give my life gladly. Well, Jerry? Kirk Manners on board the Betty W. You sure? There were a dozen men saw him run up the gangplank at the last minute. Ready, Tonto? Tonto, ready. It's getting dark. Can you find your way through the forest at night? Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up there. They'll cut back to river now. Do you think we're ahead of the boat, Kimosabe? Oh, no, we make plenty good time. Yeah, I can see some light through the trees. That's where river is. The Betty W. The trail follows the bank from now on, doesn't it? That's right. We can get to the landing ahead of the boat. There she is, just coming alongside us. Steady, Silver, steady. Why'd you stop, Mace, man? The captain has his cabin on the top deck, hasn't he? Yeah. 
thought I saw something up there. That first patch of light behind the wheelhouse. The door was open a second ago. I thought I saw two figures struggling. What's that? Look, the moonlight's catching him now. It's a man at the railing. He's got something on his arm. He's going to throw it over the side. It's another man. You're wrong, Jerry. It's a woman. Come on, Silver. Down the bank and into the river. You'll be all right in a minute. We're just getting to the shore. Steady. Steady, honey. What's happened? Oh, oh, Jerry. She hurt mass man? I don't think so. Who was it through you overboard? You you know him. That man we picked up at the landing last night. Kurt Banner. What happened? Oh, you. You're wearing a mask. It's a long ranger, honey. Tell him everything. <laughs> well, I, I I thought I'd say goodnight to Paul before I went to bed. The open door of his cabin, and there he was. He was sitting at his desk. His head was lying on his arms, just as if he were asleep, but, but he wasn't. Oh, easy, Betty. Go on, please. Oh, I, I started to scream, but that man... Kurt Banner? If that's his name, he grabbed hold of me, put his hand over my mouth. Then he must have hit me. The next thing I knew, I was in the water. Otto, we've got to get ahead of the boat again. No. We can't wait until it reaches the landing before we get on board. Is there any stretch where the trees grow out over the river? Oh, plenty of place like that. And the channel is close to the shore? Ah. Oh. You want to drop from branch to top of deck? That's the idea. Time to show you. Get him up, Scout. Hang on, Miss Weston. Come on, Silver. Get up there. <laughs> Silver, old boy. The girl's going to ride you onto the landing. He understands, Miss Weston. You'll find him easy to handle. Are you sure? Ah. Uh, ask friend tell Silver. Him take good care of you. Here are the reins. You'll have to lead the other horses. I understand. Here comes the boat around the bend. Quick, Jerry. Up that tree. You take this one, Tonto. I'll take the one beyond. Oh, please. I hope they won't be too late. <laughs> Jerry, drop to the deck. Now, Tonto. Stay there. I'll be with you in a second. You made it, nice, man. I don't mind telling you I had a bad moment when it was time to go over that branch. We're on board. That's all that matters. Get up to the bridge, Jerry. Take command. You'll head the boat into the cove. Right. And start a search for Kirk Banner. We don't want him to escape. What about you and Tonto? What are you going to do? We're heading for the captain's cabin. Kirk may still be there. Blast this safe open, I'd be out of it by now. Couldn't take a chance on the noise, though. I've got to get in here. He may have left a confession. There. Now to the right. Up with your hands, Banner. The Lone Ranger. Get his gun, Tonto. Uh, Time to do it. Then tie him up. I'll see to the captain. Uh, him dead like girls, say? It's hard to tell. No, Tonto, he's still alive. But that's just about all. Here, I'll put him over on the bunk. This fellow belongs to Black Hair, all right. Him have mark on wrist. So does the captain. Got him, Tonto? No, oh, not right. What about the captain? He's opening his eyes. I think he's trying to speak. Jerry. Yes, Cap. I'm right here. Take good care of Betty. Oh, sure. But you'll be here for a long time to help me. Who is this masked man? Well, that's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. He just captured the hombre that tried to kill you. You go away. Let me talk to him. Alone. All right, if that's the way you want it, Cap. See that banner's put in iron, Jerry. Right. Give him a hand, Tonto. All right, you come. Uh, just lift me up a little. I'm strong enough. I can talk some. Yeah, how's that? Fine. Masked man, did you see this arrow on my wrist? Yes. Every member of the Black Arrow knows you're the worst enemy they've got. They know all about the president sending you out to find the leader in the cave. So far, I haven't been able to. You will. I know. That sounds strange, coming from a member. I was once, but I'm not now. I didn't know what I was getting into. You tried to get out and they wouldn't let you. Is that it? I deserve this. It was only for money I joined. I'm not a traitor, though. There's only one way you can prove you're loyal, Captain. And that's by helping us round up the gang. I don't know the name of the leader. And I don't know where the cave is. The only place they ever took me was the Calvert Ranch in Wyoming. It's possible Judd Calvert might be the leader. 
Judd Calvert. That's all I can tell you. All the rest of it, you know better than I ever did. We'll head for Wyoming tonight. Be careful. That's all. They got a whole county under their control there. And they'll know you're coming somehow. No matter how secret you try to keep it. Oh, you better lie down. I'm glad to go. If I'd lived, I'd have to go to jail. This way, maybe Betty won't have to know about me. Is there any chance of that? I don't see why not, Captain. You've done all you could to redeem yourself. There's no reason why Betty should know. That's fine. <gasps> Easy. Goodbye. Good luck, masked man. You need it. There goes the masked man in Tonto. We won't be able to see him much longer. Heading west. You know where, Jerry? In some place the captain sent him before you. Oh, honey. Try to remember what the masked man said. The captain died for his country. There's something mighty fine about that. Try to remember it. Yes, it's mighty fine, but... What was Dad fighting? What's the Lone Ranger fighting? I've got a feeling of something awfully big. I've got a feeling we'll... We'll never see the masked man again. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>